Getting something. Ah, it's probably nothing. Hey guys, welcome to Film Learning, the show dedicated to learning you some filmmaking and learning you good. Well, here we are, season two. This is where we make the big bucks, people. Yep, I'm looking at tens of dollars per episode now. Wait. All right, on to today's episode. This week I'll be showing you how to create your own old school, no, not that shit, old school game start screen and character select screen. So let's get started. First thing you'll need is a game logo of some kind. I used the film linen logo that I made in Cinema 4D as well as the fighter text, also made in cinema. But you can create it wherever you want. Hell, you can even make it in After Effects if you feel like it. I'm not stopping you. Next, you'll need some characters for your select screen. I just grabbed some weapons and t-shirts and other random crap I had in the studio, but you can make them with anything you like. Cartoons, people, the sky's the limit, gang. You'll also need to click the link in the description and download some of those sweet old school sounds. Free or charge, of course. Which is super easy. All you have to do is select the type of sound. You can change any parameter you want or just hit randomize or mutate until you find the one you like. And when you're happy, just save it to your computer. It's that easy. Lastly, grab the download pack that I've linked below. It contains an 8-bit font, assets, in fact, it's the project file from this episode. So if you don't want to follow along and just cheat, go nuts. But if you want to learn, we're about to go balls deep in this. To After Effects. Okay, so here are the assets we're using for the start screen comp. We have our logo, our fighter graphic, a light ray gleam that I already rendered out with an 8-bit style, and my big stupid head. So we'll start with a new composition in Full HD and we'll name it Start. Next, let's add our logo to the comp and we'll scale it down to fit into the center of the frame. Since we want to animate the logo coming together, we have to break it in two. Grab the pen tool and let's draw a mask around our top text. But what about the bottom? Where'd it go? Hit Ctrl D to duplicate our logo layer drop down the mask menu and change the transfer mode to subtract and hey, we're back. From there, scrub forward 12 frames, hit P and hit the stopwatch on both layers. We'll then head 10 frames back and position them both off screen and booyah, logo animated. Next, let's give it the retro color profile. Head to the preset menu, type TV and drop the bad TV preset on both layers. We'll then delete all the effects bar the color balance. Make sure you do this on both layers, gang. Our next step is to add the pixelation. Head to the presets menu, type mosaic, and drop it in on the top layer. We'll then adjust the settings until we're happy with the pixelation. Looks like 250's the sweet spot for me. We'll then copy the effect and paste it on the bottom layer. We'll also check the box for sharp colors as it gives the colors a little bit more artifacting and makes them look a bit more you know, retro. Next step, throw that fighter graphic on. We'll scale it down and rotate it into place. We'll then copy and paste our color and mosaic effects from the other layers straight on. Since the fighter graphic was a different size, we'll knock the mosaic levels down to 150. That looks better. Animating this one is a cinch. Toggle on 3D and check the box to make it a 3D layer. Head forward to the one second mark, hit P, hit the stopwatch, Head backwards to frame 15 and crank that Z space until it goes off screen. Now, let's check out a preview. Nice. It's time to add our gleam. Since I made this clip on my practice, it needs a little bit of adjustment because it doesn't fit quite into place. Ugh, but now you can see the edge of the frame. Grab the old pen tool and draw a rough circular mask. We'll then drop down the mask menu and feather the crap out of it. Ah, mucha better. Next step, adding our player text. Have your 8-bit font selected and get the typing. I don't really like the spacing between the two and the player, so I broke them up into two separate text boxes. You don't have to do that, but I'm kind of anal that way. We'll then trim the text to start around the two second mark. Now, let's add that stupid head. Hold down the shift key and drop it in line with the text. 
scale it down, and I mean way down, to like 10%. We'll then copy and paste our pixel and color effects from the other layers. Bump both mosaic levels down to 40, and then we're on to the next step. Hit P and hit the stopwatch on position. We'll then skip forward a few steps and add another keyframe. Skip forward one more frame, and then we'll move the head to the two player position. Once done, you can then copy those previous frames and paste them to animate moving between the two player and the one player. Like so. Once you're happy, we'll head up and grab a new black solid. Turn it off and grab the rectangle tool. Drawing a shape around the head and the player one text. Turn the solid back on and then hit Ctrl Shift D on the first layer and delete that excess. Scrub forward to the point where you want the animation to start. Hit T to bring up opacity, dial it down to zero and hit the stopwatch. Skip ahead just one frame this time and crank the opacity to 100. Skip forward four to five frames, add another keyframe. Skip ahead just one frame this time and crank the opacity to 100. You can then repeat this process and you'll end up with a blinking animation, like when you press start on some video games. I'm just gonna pre-comp these layers and adjust the position so I don't mess with my animation. You can avoid this step by putting them in the correct position in the first place. Derp. Now, let's add another text box and type press start. Adjust it into position and trim it so it starts after your initial logo animation and finishes before your player select screen. We'll then add another solid, this time white, and trim it so it's only one frame and then we'll move it to the point where the press start ends and the player selection begins. Last step on the start screen guys, add another black solid and we'll do the same blinking animation on the press start portion. Let's check out a preview of that finished start screen. All right. So we've got our start screen set up. Now let's choose our character. Let's open a new comp, full HD, 10 seconds long and call it character select. To save time, cause this is a long ass episode already, I've already added the color and mosaic effects to my stills, after I keyed them of course. So let's drag them on in. Next, we'll head up and add a solid. It can be any color you want, mine's red. Turn off the layer, grab the rectangle tool and draw a box around one of your guys. Turn it back on and drop that layer below your characters. Now, duplicate that layer for each of your guys, changing the solid color and position as you go until you've got something like this. From there, we'll grab the text tool and we'll add our nameplates and a select your fighter title. I'm going to change the stroke color for a bit of difference between the two. We'll then duplicate that title and add the word time as well. From there, let's add our countdown timer. This is super easy guys. We'll head up and grab a new black solid. Next, we'll head up to effect, text and add numbers. Make sure you set the font to 8-bit wonder and click OK. All right, grab them numbers and drag them into position. Let's change some settings. First, change the decimal point to zero, the display option to fill over stroke, and match the title text you've currently got on screen in size and stroke thickness. We'll then change the value to 10, making sure you're at the start of the comp. Hit the stopwatch and head straight to the end and then type zero. Done. You now have a 10 second timer. I told you it was easy. Now, let's make one of those one up bubbles. Make a new comp, call it bubble one up and click OK. Drop the bubble asset in and then head to effect, color correction and add photo filter. Uncheck preserve luminosity and we'll change the filter to custom. Crank that density up to 100% and then we'll change the color to a yellowy green. Next, grab a solid and make it red. Drop it below your bubble and we'll grab the pen tool. And we'll draw a rough mask to restrict the solid to the bubble's outline. We'll then grab the text tool and type one up. I'm changing the stroke to black so it stands out a little more. We'll then scale it up, then we'll highlight the one and make it a little bit bigger than the up. Thicken the stroke to 27 or so, 
and then from there, head up to Effect, Perspective, and add a Drop Shadow. We'll increase the distance to around 23, just to give that text a little bit more depth. To make any final adjustments, head back to the Select Comp and drop that bitch in. Scale it down to size and position it just above your character. We'll then add our mosaic effect and adjust it accordingly. 95 seems to work well for me. One down, three to go. Duplicate that bubble comp in your project window three times and then open them all up. We'll then change the solid color to match our background on each, like so. As with the first bubble, drop them into the comp, scale them, position them, and then copy the mosaic effect onto all three. All right, to simulate the black and white selection animation, we'll head up and grab an adjustment layer. We'll then head to effect, color correction, and add a black and white. Next, grab the rectangle tool and draw a rectangle over the last three characters. We'll then turn off their bubble layers and all other text in the comp. Hit Control Shift S and then we'll save a Photoshop still to our folder. Name it Character 1. Rinse and repeat this process with the other guys. You'll have to draw a second mask as you move along. Just remember to turn off those bubble layers as you move to the next character. Do this for all four guys and then import those stills back into the project. We'll then turn off the adjustment layer, all the original image layers including the solids and then turn the text layers back on. Next, drag our new select stills into the comp. Ugh, looks awful, right? Let's fix that. Grab the bottom three layers and move them along the comp around about a second. Then, grab the two bottom layers and do the same thing again. Scrub to the transition point between the two layers and then hit Control shift d on the first layer and delete that excess. Repeat that process for all the other layers like so. We'll then duplicate layer three and two to simulate choosing a character and drag them into position. Once done, drag your final character layer out to the end of the comp. Our last step is to add a black solid, and just like with the start screen, create a mask with a rectangle tool and animate the opacity settings to give it a blinking motion. You know, like you press the start button on that character. Okay, let's check out a preview. Nice. We'll then render both of these comps out, throw them in the Premiere Pro, and finally, we're done. Add all those steps together, throw in some sweet sound effects, and you'll get something like this. So that's creating your very own retro start and character select screens. It's a little fiddly in parts, but it's not really hard, and it's pretty cool to see yourself in a game. Eh? A big thanks to Technoax for that awesome 8-bit music. You can check out his channel right here. It's all royalty free, guys, so go nuts. But that's my time for the first episode of this new season. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button, go crazy on those like and share buttons. If you have a request, leave it in the comments. Here's the Twitter, and stay tuned for next week when we see the first level of our game, and as always, good people, keep learning.